Hello and good evening and welcome to our evening prayer here on Twitch. Today we're celebrating the person of Oscar Romero. Now Oscar Romero uh, has, is a, a, a priest or he was a priest uh, in the Catholic Church in El Salvador uh, and he served as the fourth Archbishop of San Salvador. He's quite an outspoken person. Uh, he spoke out against poverty, social justice, corruption, assassination and torture um, as the country began to try and tear itself apart. In 1980, uh, Romero was assassinated while celebrating Mass in the Chapel of Hospice of Divine Providence. No one was ever convicted of that crime. From the moment I heard about Oscar Romero, he was one of those people that sort of gave to me an example of what it is like to be a priest. That idea of not exactly self-sacrificing, but knowing that when he went to work uh, every day, there was a fair chance that that could very well be his last, that assassination was the kind of thing that was likely to happen to somebody as outspoken as him. So today we will be going through the readings for the saints. What has become um, our habit is we're going to at least uh, for the moment follow through the, uh, the evening prayer uh, that we began with, which is coming out of uh, this book. Um, there's nothing for you to join in with at the moment, uh, but if you'd like to join in with the Amen at the end, please do so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My soul waits for the Lord. More than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord, hear my voice. With my whole heart I want to praise you, O Lord, hear my voice. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand, who could stand? I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word do I hope. Lord, you've always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you've always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you've always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious of heart, Today, I believe. Lord, you've always kept me safe in trials, and now, tried as I am, today, I believe. Lord, you've always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today, I believe. Lord, you've always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today, I believe. Lord, you've always spoken when the time was ripe, and though you be silent now, today I believe. Our reading today coming from Isaiah chapter 58. Is what you call a fast a day acceptable to the Lord? Rather, is not the fast I require to loose the fetters of injustice, to untie the knots of the yoke, and to set free those who are oppressed, tearing off every yoke? Is not sharing your food with the hungry, taking the homeless poor into your house, clothing the naked when you meet them, and never evading a duty to your kinsfolk? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and new skin will speedily grow over your wound. Your righteousness will be your vanguard, and the glory of the Lord your rearguard. Then, when you call, the Lord will answer. When you cry to him, he will say, Here I am. If you cease to pervert justice, to point the accusing finger and lay false charges. If you give your own food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the wretched, then the light will rise for you out of darkness, and dusk will be for you like the noonday. 
The Lord will be your guide continually and will satisfy your needs in the bare desert. He will give you strength of limb. He will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Our second reading comes from the letter of John, the first letter of John. Starting to read at chapter 3. We know we have crossed over from death to life because we love our fellow Christians. Anyone who does not love is still in the realm of death. For everyone who hates a fellow Christian is a murderer and murderers, and as you know, do not have eternal life dwelling within them. This is how we know what love is. Christ gave his life for us, and we in our turn must give our lives for our fellow Christians. But if someone who possesses the good things of this world sees a fellow Christian in need and withholds compassion from them, how can it be said that the love of God dwells in them? Children, love must not be a matter of theory or talk. It must be true love which shows itself in action. Our next reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said to them, Tonight you will all lose faith because of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of his flock will be scattered. But after I am raised, I shall go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter replied, Everyone else may lose faith because of you, but I never will. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, tonight before the crop crows, you will disown me three times. Peter said, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Jesus then came with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Distress and anguish overwhelmed him, and he said to them, My heart is ready to break with grief. Stop here and stay awake with me. Then he went on a little farther, threw himself down and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by, yet not to my will, but yours. He came back to the disciples and found them asleep, and he said to Peter, What? Could none of you stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake, and pray that you may be spared the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away for a second time, and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass me by, without my drinking it, your will be done. He came again, and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. So he said to them, so he left them, and went away again, and prayed a third time, using the same words as before. When he came to the disciples and said to them, Still asleep, still resting, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let us go, for the traitor is upon us. Here ends the readings. We come now to our meditation for the day. When Cuthbert was made a prior at Melrose, he did not restrict his teaching and influence to the monastery, but worked to rouse the ordinary folk far and near to exchange their foolish customs for a love of heavenly joys. He often used to leave the monastery, sometimes on horseback, 
but more frequently on foot, and visit the neighbouring towns, where he preached the way of truth to those who had gone astray. Cuthbert was so a skilful speaker, and had such a light in his face, and such love proclaiming his message, that none presumed to hide their innermost secrets, but openly confessed all their wrongdoing, for they felt it impossible to conceal their guilt from him. He gladly undertook the task of visiting and preaching, mainly in the villages that lay far distant among high and inaccessible mountains, which other f others feared to visit, and whose barbarity and squalor daunted other teachers. He taught with patience and skill, and when he left the monastery, it would sometimes be a week, sometimes two or three, and occasionally an entire month before he returned home remaining in the mountains to guide the peasants heavenward by his teaching and example. We now come to our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your world, a world that is in desperate need of coming to know your peace and your love. Guide all those who are finding this time of quarantine to be difficult. Support and uphold all those who are finding being separated from loved ones and family and support to be difficult and anxiety driven. Pour into their heart your love and your patience. Strengthen them. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are continuing to ignore warnings to stay at home and to stay safe. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will help them and teach them that they may know what it is to act for the love of others and not for the love of themselves. We pray for your church, a church that is under continual pressure and is changing rapidly over the coming days. We ask, O oh Lord, that you'll continue to strengthen all preachers and teachers and all those working and guiding with the church, that they may find new ways to continue to spread your life-giving message. Heavenly Father, we pray for all leaders of the world as they grasp and grapple with an impossible task. We ask, Lord, that you will strengthen them and guide them. Grant to them your compassion and your wisdom. Help them to work for your people, to save them, to uplift them and to uphold them. We pray for all those people who have put their lives on the line, like Oscar Romero did, for their fellow human. We ask, Lord, that you will be with them and support them. We pray especially for all those who did this, who put their lives on the line and lost them and have gone to be with your saints in heaven. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will receive their souls into whatever final rest they, they wish to go to. We ask, Lord, that you will welcome them, support them and guide them. Grant to them a place at your right hand, for they have chosen to sacrifice their life for, so that others may live. On our prayer list, we pray for Simon, for Logan and for Auntie Nora. We pray for all those people that we know, all those people are in danger. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will strengthen them, guide them and, if possible, protect them. And we bring all our prayers together and we say the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the refuge of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In the shadow of your wings I will sing your praises, O Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, to dwell in the presence of my God, to gaze on your holy place. In the shadow of your wings I will sing your praises, O Lord. I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O wait for the Lord, have courage and wait for the Lord. In the shadow of your wings I will sing your praises, O Lord. And the blessing. See that you be at peace among yourselves, my children, and love one another. Follow the example of the good people of old, and that God will comfort you and help you, both in this world and the world which is to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again uh, this evening, and thank you for uh, your patience as we work our way through the new and ever changes. We are sorry to say that we have had to close our churches under uh, government uh, precautions in order to try and keep more people uh, more people safe, uh, but you can still get a hold of us. Uh, we are still here working for you and here to help and support in every way that we can. As I've said before, you will see below me on the screen our website, our Twitter account, our Facebook. That link at the bottom is our newsletter where you will uh, an email newsletter where you will find that if you sign up to that uh, once a week you'll get an electronic email from us just showing you what's going on and showing us still working for you um, and here to help and support you if you're not even able to access any of these services i know that anybody who's not able to access these services please do get in touch through the uh, social media below or through my email which again you can find on the social media and we will print out this stuff and we will post it out to you so that no one needs to feel alone or disconnected from their church at this time if you've missed any of these broadcasts or just needs to pray again along with us we also have a youtube channel underneath the name the Havard family of churches and you will find us now over on youtube you can find the link for that on our facebook page so thank you very much for joining us look after yourselves remember to stay safe and god bless you and keep you thank you